Dr. John. Luke Story. Have you ever listened to the musician Dr. John from New Orleans? I have. Oh, yeah. man. I forgot about him. One of my favorites. Mac yeah. Romanek, I think, was his name. Uh-huh. Well, you know, our common friend, mutual friend, Doyle Bramhall, was friends with Dr. John. Was and so he really? He, was, he would tell me stories about Dr. John. He said that um, he, he walked up to Dr. John and said, so Dr. John, are you, are you a doctor? Like, where'd you get your degree? He said, you don't need no degree to be a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> That's classic. Actually, you just reminded me of something. Uh, Dr. John was a sober, sober guy, mm-hmm. former alcoholic or addict or whatever, and um, like myself and Doyle. And um, I saw him he, since 12-step programs are anonymous, so it's there's no rules, but it's really like uncool to talk about someone you saw at a meeting. Mm-hmm. Cause I've, you know, there's a lot of famous people in meetings and things like that. And I would never talk about them, but since he's passed, I feel it's probably okay to break his anonymity, hopefully. Um, but yeah, he spoke at a meeting once out in LA and I was like super starstruck, you know, mm. when I first got sober, it was uh, one of the things I struggled with cause I was playing in rock and roll bands and stuff. And I thought I was like Mr. Cool and which I was very uncool actually, um, based on how I was living, but I felt really lame. Mm -hmm. You know, being sober was like lame. If you're very like ego identified with being a druggie and rock and roll and Hollywood and all that, I was like really lame. And when I first got sober, I was homeless and jobless. And one of the first jobs I got was working for Aerosmith. And they were like the first band ever in history to be publicly sober and talking about how they went to the Betty Ford Center and we're all clean, man. And we're having a big comeback. And they had a hugely successful comeback. Mm -hmm. So over those first few years, if I would see someone who was like cool that I looked up to that was sober, it really helped my sobriety because I felt less lame about it, mm-hmm. you know, which is which is funny. Like you would be proud to be a total loser drug addict, but I was, you know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and and Steve Ray Vaughan was also, you know, someone mm-hmm. who was in twelve step groups and you know became wildly successful after he got sober and stuff. So well, anyway. that was kind of the, the 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 flow for me as a child was um, growing up in Hawaii you know, everybody was partying, you know, I mean, there was so many drugs associated with my very early childhood. I think I was, I was 12 when I did mushrooms the first time. Wow. Yeah. And You're lucky. LS, <laughs> LSD wasn't too far behind that. And, you know, yeah. so, you know, I had an older sister that was really into it and, um, and it was the cool thing, you know, we were having the best time ever back then. And, uh, and then of course, you know, it's all fun until it's not fun. Right. And so I look back now and it's a lot of my friends that I grew up with, you know, they passed, you know, and a lot of, um, you know, the crystal meth kind of thing really tore Hawaii up pretty significantly. A lot lot of people are still really um, into that. And so that was actually a part of the culture in high school for me was, you know, smoking that ice, (laughs) (laughs) the blue ice. (laughs) Yeah. But, but it's like, it was cool. Like it, it was the culture of, of us as like, we had no idea the, the significance of it. Nowadays, there's a lot of, you know, information out there for kids and adults to know like, Hey, this is really a bad idea. But back then, I mean, there was just, there was nothing that was preventing people from really, really going into that, that, that culture. And, uh, it was very difficult to my, my, the luckiest thing that happened to me and my parents got divorced when I was 15 and my sister st- stuck back in Hawaii with my father, and I went with my mom to Florida, and we moved to St. Pete. And, uh, and I just got away from all of that, you know, and um, I think if I didn't, if I stayed in Hawaii, I probably would have probably, you know, I don't know if I'd be here today. I've always thought that was so sad because Hawaiian culture and those islands and just the, the magic of the energy there, it's so sad that in particular crystal meth has mm-hmm. like gripped those islands so much it's mm-hmm. really weird it's in i wonder sometimes because i'm a conspiracy analyst like how did that infiltrate there and why it's so weird i mean one thing is you can make it in a bathtub right with mm-hmm. very little chemistry experience you might blow yourself up but um you know i understand it's not that difficult to make crystal meth so maybe that's mm-hmm. part of it because you don't have to import it 
right? Like there's maybe not a big Coke problem because you have to import Coke, whereas you can just make crystal meth. Well, they on were the importing island. it, and it was coming from California. Oh, really? So people weren't really like where... making it in sheds out in the jungle or whatever. No, no, I, I, I witnessed it firsthand with you know folks coming in from California with you know oh, lots of it. And I mean, I'm not a big historian on crystal meth, but from what I understand, it was made by chemists in kind of the California area, right? And that's where they 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 had some um really interesting breakthroughs in the study of parkinson's because the people that were using a lot of the crystal were developing parkinson's and they actually were able to kind of like um understand the development of parkinson's and uh um some of the different um takeaways that they have have been um uh, incorporated into some of the, the the ways that neurologists are uh, you know dealing with parkinson's patients so that's one positive aspect and if you wanted to interesting if you wanted to like um promote parkinson's with like laboratory animals they're actually using you know high doses of of, of meth for that really mm -hmm. when i was in uh rehab the one and only time <laughs> thankfully for many people it doesn't stick right for me it stuck thank god but i was in there and um it was in Northern California in 1997, and there was maybe 30 people in there, mostly men, and a lot of them were um, in there because their insurance paid for it. And there was, so there was a lot of like uh, heavy equipment operators and construction workers, and it was like blue collar kind of crowd in there. Mm -hmm. And the vast majority of them were meth addicts. Mm -hmm. And I was one of only two heroin addicts that mm -hmm. went in there and it was me and this other guy, I forget his name, but he was a tough customer. He was from Oakland and he was a bad mother effer man. Uh -huh. Yeah. He had a wild past. And uh, so he and I bonded because when people come off meth, a meth run, they sleep for like a week straight. When you come off heroin, you have insomnia for like a week straight, uh -huh. if not longer. So he and I couldn't sleep. We're just sweating it out every night. So we would bond over that. And um, one of the things that he shared with me was, um, actually shared two funny, st it's weird the things you remember. One funny story that he shared with me is he said he used to be a cab driver in Hollywood back in the early 90s. And that he was, I don't know if I should say this, eh, who cares? He was Chris Robinson's uh, of the Black Crows. He was like his kind of driver. Mm -hmm, <laughs> and he, and mm -hmm. I don't know why I remember this, but he said Chris used to cook up heroin and keep it in a Visine bottle mm -hmm. and like snort it. Oh. You know, and I was like, damn, I wish I would have known that you could do that. I would have been doing it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty convenient uh, versus needles and all the other things. But uh, the one thing he told me that stuck with me is he was um, he was a cook. He cooked meth. Uh -huh. That was like his main gig. And he cooked for the Hells Angels. So he was like a big distributor. Oh, yeah. And I said, what's in that stuff? Because I never liked meth. I would still do it, but I hated it. Uh, but I would, you know, it's better than being sober. <laughs> So uh, he told me, I said, what's in that stuff, man? It's like so toxic. And he said, dude, you have no idea. He said, all of the ingredients that you use, I mean, to cook the cleanest, best possible meth, every ingredient has a skull and bones poison warning on the bottle. Mm -hmm. You know, it's oh, like, yeah. I'm like, no wonder it burns your nose so bad and makes you so sick and paranoid. And it's just like the worst drug. I just never That's, understood how someone could get addicted to that drug. Cause it's like the worst high ever to me. Yeah. You know, but anyway, I digress. Uh -huh. Had no idea we we're going to go down that road, which is why this show is always so fun. Yeah. Well, we're but, we're we're about to embark on some really interesting topics here. Yeah, I'm excited about uh, some of the things that we're going to be talking about. All right, I'm not trying to be dramatic here, but stress is a killer. Literally, not only does it lead to low energy, sleep loss, and irritability, but it's also a key factor in illnesses like high blood pressure, diabetes, and autoimmune disease. And with more than 80% of people saying stress is affecting their physical health, I'd say we've got a real situation on our hands here. Well, thankfully, our friends over at Just Thrive Health developed a way to safeguard us from the silent killer. And this one, I assure you, is truly safe and effective. It's called Just Calm. Just Calm's exclusive mood-lifting blend is clinically proven to help you relax and breathe easier in as little as four weeks. 
It's chock full of a special mood biotic strain of probiotics called B. longum 1714. And multiple clinical studies show that it helps you maintain balanced cortisol levels, promotes vitality, supports better sleep, and encourages a healthy mood. Just Calm's also formulated with three targeted B vitamins proven to help maintain gray matter and support optimal neurotransmitter function. So just punch up justthrivehealth.com and use the code LUKE20 to save 20% off a 90-day bottle. And Just Calm is designed as a companion to their amazing spore-based probiotic. And while the probiotic addresses the root cause of chronic gut-brain conditions, Just Calm busts through stress, and it really leaves me feeling cool and in control no matter what life throws at me. If you want the full details on what makes Just Thrive special, make sure to check out the Lifestylist episode 499. And for a steady, chill, more relaxed you, visit JustThriveHealth.com and use that code LUKE20 to save 20%. I want to let people know that toward the end of this conversation, we're going to talk about your super cutting edge uh, prostate treatments. And for women listening that think like, oh, I don't need to hear the end of the show because I don't have a prostate. I want to let the women know that if you have any men in your life, whether it's brother, husband, boyfriend, dad, especially dads, because older guys are really prone to prostate problems, which you're going to share with us. Um, please, women, listen in, because if you have a man who's having problems in that area, um, this is by far the most cutting-edge, advanced treatment that I've ever heard of. And many, many men, and especially you know the women who don't have a prostate, are unaware of like what a pervasive issue this mm -hmm. is. And so mm -hmm. we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But um, and I'm really excited because I've been having problems in that area and going to your clinic in Sarasota has been freaking amazing. And I've seen a lot of improvements with it. So, um, we'll talk about that later, but the first thing I want to talk about is the latest development in stem cells. And I've done a number of shows on stem cells, more in the traditional vein, um, adipose derived stem cells, bone marrow derived stem cells, et cetera. I've done a lot of those treatments over the years. And seen a little improvement, but nothing that really met the the promise or the hope that you hear about, like the miraculous healing power of stem cells. I mean, I think it's improved some things for me, but nothing that noticeable until I did the, um, well, second most recent treatment with you where you did my hip. My right hip has just been problematic for uh, 20 plus years or something. And that was the first thing out of all the things I've done where there's been a lasting change, less mm -hmm. inflammation, less pain, a little more mobility. It's kind of my fault because I don't do a lot of mobility drills that would help it <laughs> in that area because I'm lazy. Uh, so I want to talk about that and let's just dive in. And I also want to let people know um, everything we talk about will be in the show notes at lukestory.com slash Dr. John. And for potential patients or practitioners that want to learn more about the stem cells, we're going to create a link for that. For now, we'll just make a hyperlink. It'll be lukestory.com slash X cells. Mm -hmm. So, and you can speak to how practitioners can get involved in this because there's a lot of people doing stem cells out there. And I think they're making it a lot harder on themselves in mm -hmm. terms of practitioners mm -hmm. and probably having to charge way too much money to their clients and maybe not getting the best results and so on. So, um, you know, this is going to be great information, not only for people that want to explore stem cells for their own healing, but also practitioners that can adopt this into their clinics. Um, so anyway, tell us about, uh, tell us about the stem cells. What have we been doing and why do I feel so awesome? Yeah. Well, I'm really happy to hear how well you're doing and hips are notoriously the most difficult area of the body to treat. And we've had a few patients that we've done other types of, you know, stem cell regenerative treatments on their hips and not had quite the complete healing. And so you're not alone. We've got a few other people. Um, and that really tells me that we're really onto something, you know, when you can really move the needle on hips. Um, we started uh, as a clinic uh, utilizing regenerative uh, therapies in over 20 years ago. And it all kind of uh, came after I got a, an injury to my back and I was told by a neurosurgeon that I'm going to need surgery. And he told me it was my disc. And then a friend of mine got out of um, uh, osteopathic school and he was talking about this treatment called prolotherapy, which is like the early days of stem cells 
where it's like a dextrose solution. It's not nearly as strong. And it's brutal. <laughs> I used to do those <laughs> and very painful. Yeah, they can be. So, But what was nice about that treatment for me was that it really opened my eyes to the fact that most of our um, pain uh, and and dysfunctional aspects of our joint is from the connective tissue. So it's those supporting structures of our joints that become the problem. And so when you really look look at the the quality or the type of tissues that are more vulnerable to injury where they don't repair, where stem cells really shines is they're very dense cartilage, connective tissues. Where you don't get blood flow. You right? don't have blood flow. The yeah. body can't bring in the groceries, take out the garbage. So... Then um, kind of moving forward, we started using blood and PRP kind of came on on the scene maybe about five years after we started with the Prolo. And then um, we were one of the first clinics to actually start pulling bone marrow and doing liposuctions on patients. And we were even putting them both together, right? We were, we called that Maripos and boy, we were seeing some amazing results. We still are. Um, however, the FDA told us we we had to stop using the adipose because when we took that fat into our lab and added an enzyme to dissolve the fat, what that left was something called the stromal vascular fraction, which is like all the stuff in the fat besides the fat cells. And, um, and so then we would take that stromal vascular fraction and we would mix it with their PRP or, or we were doing IVs with some people with that as well. And so it's an incredible regenerative um, product. Um, but the FDA came and said that because we were using an enzyme and we were doing something to it in the lab, it was more than minimally manipulating. And that's the language they have in the laws that you can't more than manipulate, um, anything from the body and put it back into the body, um, because they consider that a drug, right? Which would require, you know, approval. And so, and this is why people will go to Mexico or Panama or Germany or wherever and get culture expanded stem cells where they start Mm. to multiply them and that in this country would be considered a drug is that why people will fly away and spend a bunch of time and money that that's exactly right and so that's really the next thing that really came onto the market was all of a sudden um we get just inundated by companies using different aspects of perinatal tissue you know the the um, Wharton's jelly, the the amniotic fluid, the the amniotic sac, the cord blood, like all these are perinatal tissues and very rich in growth factors and stem cells. And so um, there's a number of companies that have um, isolated certain um, lines of stem cells, lineages of stem cells from the from these perinatal tissues. And there these clinics are like the Rorden, Rorden's clinic in Panama. Um, bioaccelerator is one that a lot of people are talking about that's in um, Colombia. I mean, people going to Mexico, but there, there's, there's a variety of these different companies that will now culture expand a specific stem cell line and they, they can't do it too many generations. So the more generations they go, the weaker those cells are. So usually like the first couple generations are the strongest, but that allows them to be able to take and, and expand them into like large numbers of stem cells to then be able to do, you know, treatment on people from running an IV, treating a variety of different um, diseases. Uh, There's injecting it into joints and into tissues. There's um, sexual rejuvenation. There's hair, there's skin. I mean, it's really, um, it's really uh, expansive as as far as all the things that you can do with it. I I jumped on board uh, and not with the expanded, but in the United States, we could get like um, things that were directly from the placenta. They weren't taken to a lab. They were just a company that was getting the placentas from the hospitals that were donated. And then they would process these tissues and then make them into doses and we would buy them. And this is primarily the, 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 the treatment that most clinics in the United States offer, unless they're using bone marrow or unless they're using adipose tissue in some way, they're buying these doses from a variety of different companies that make them from some of these perinatal tissues. Now, out of the country is those specific stem cells are culture expanded. That's not allowed in the United States. And I would say that if you were going to receive a treatment with perinatal tissue, probably that would be a, an advantage to have it expanded into you know these millions of stem cells. 
what I've what I've found though is that the treatments that we were doing with patients with bone marrow and adipose tissue always did better. And, st- and, and even before we started, and we're going to be talking about this new uh, uh, um, option called X cells. But before we had that, we were still doing a lot of patients with bone marrow. And I might have put like a placental based stem cell with a bone marrow to kind of like boost it, right? And peptides and things like that. But if I had a moderate to severe arthritis or a large rotator cuff tear, or an injury hips, I would often say, we, we, I'd like to do bone marrow with this case, right? So my team would agree that we wanted to use bone marrow because ultimately the results were always better. And they were better in a few ways. One is um, the patients seem to produce more cartilage like visually when we would follow up with them on, on, on MRI and ultrasound. And number two, I would see some patients years and years later, in some instances, it was like 10, 15 years later, that some of the cases that we've done, I'd seen them where they're still doing great. So the durability of those treatments, I really felt comfortable with. So, um, and, and I was also, with regards to these culture expanded stem cells that are done out of the country, I've seen a lot of cases that have come to me that have gone and done those treatments and maybe felt better for a period of time, but it wasn't durable. And I think that what I've discovered, because I've really dove into all the different options and stem cells, and I, I think I kind of understand why that's the case is because ultimately these perinatal tissue stem cells are very fragile. And so they have a very high ability to reduce inflammation. So they're very good at augmenting inflammation. And so oftentimes people will feel better for a period of time. Um, however, they, they don't survive for longer than even an hour, Luke. And so one of the things that happens when a stem cell is transplanted into the body is that they will adhere to an area that's damaged and they'll start to secrete exosomes, right? And so anybody that's kind of studying this field has been looking um, and seeing people talk about exosomes because that's another option that we haven't mentioned yet where the, they, they can stress these different perinatal tissue and trigger them to secrete a bunch of exosomes into a solution and then take that solution and freeze it. And those can be pulled out of the freezer at doctor's offices to utilize for a variety. And we've also used those quite a bit. And that was when those came on the market, boy, that really created a lot of excitement. But ultimately, um, I would say the results still weren't as good as what we were getting from taking the patient's own, um, but like I said, bone marrow and adipose tissue. So Um, when I really started to dig into some of the advantages of like what I would call these reservoirs that our body, that God made with us, right? Our body made, um, creation made two main reservoirs of regenerative substances is our bone marrow, where all of it's produced and made, right? That's where all of our stem cells and our red blood cells, all of our white blood cells, our cells are made in our bone marrow. And then adipose tissue is really unique because one out of every hundred cells in your fat is a stem cell. And so they, they've they looked into um, adipose tissue and most people when they, they, they're referencing um, uh, the adipose tissue, they talk about adipose derived stem cells. And that's mostly because in the beginning, that's all they really thought were, was there is these mesenchymal stem cells called adipose derived stem cells. But then the recent research is coming out with these other st- stem cell lines, which they think that what's in the, f- that's, they call it the fraction, because earlier I'd said the stromal vascular fraction. So when you take the fat out of there, you have this um, collection of about you know 10 to 12 different types of stem cells. And one of the groups of stem cells is called muse stem cells, which is multi-lineage differentiating um, endurance cells. How's that for a, for a name? I don't know how you remember all this stuff. Yeah. Well, I was practicing before we started. <laughs> yeah. I'm in there. But it's down yeah. there reciting your notes. Yeah. It's a mouthful, but like I love, you know, you, you listen to the end of it, it's endurance cells. And that's really where what really shines when the, the research has compared adipose derived stem cells with the fraction in particular versus stem cells. You think about like, um, like people that are into health and wellness, it's pretty well understood that you're better off getting nutrients from a whole food source, right? Like 
they did a study in 2007 in 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 London um, in England regarding the difference between a synthetic vitamin C and getting the same amount of vitamin C from blood oranges and they found that the antioxidant um, ability for with the the blood oranges was significantly higher than just the synthetic isolated vitamin C and so when you look at the orange the the, the study concluded we have bioflavonoids and polyphenols and rutin and you know there's there's all these different you know cofactors and enzymes that are synergistic and i think that's why when they're looking at these studies and they're comparing even bone marrow but but the adipose derived stem cells with the fraction in particular it's far exceeding um you know the the what it looks like the a lot of the perinatal tissue can offer and i i got to tell you you know i was at first i was a little skeptical because this wasn't coming from the same patient, right? And so I was thinking, well, um, is there a possibility this could contaminate my patients, right? Um, what's the deal with with if they were vaccinated and there's, there's spike proteins? I mean, could that be in there? Is there any possibility that there could be any type of disease transmission, right? And so um, I really dug into it and the, the, um, the, the company that I'm partnering with that's, that's producing this, um, really went through everything and they highly vet these people. It's mostly young females that donate their fat and they're highly vetted and they're tested literally three times. And um, they test them for um, the spike proteins. And then when they process the, the, the fat, they take the fat out, they take all any, any cellular material like blood or anything like that. And then they take something called the endothelial cells, which actually have the ACE receptors and the spike proteins, which by the way, if you're getting placental-based stem cells in the U.S., it's impossible for them to remove those um, those endothelial cells because they'll destroy the Wharton's jelly, and it would it would it would in Wharton jelly type of stem cells. The majority of I think what clinics are using that's what we've used, right? So there is a risk, and companies the best most companies can do is have a questionnaire and say, you know, have you been vaccinated? They say no. And some of these people get money, they get paid for donating, you know, their placenta and whatnot. So there's a motivation with they might not be honest. Um, so that really gave me a lot of confidence is, is, is the testing and the, the way that it's filtered. But the other thing that was really shocking to me is the way that, that they're able to extract these stem cells is so, is so, um, safe on these these cells there's no chemicals at all there's no enzymes it's all using gravity and so he's discovered a way to so safely pull the that fraction and those adipose drive stem cells out of the fat and there's no way i could have done anything that well in my lab and any doctor right so it's 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 um the the consistency you know, of this product is, is really exciting. And so they've also done studies with IVs with um, the, these X cells, the company they've done, they've gone through FDA studies with osteoarthritis um, and a variety of different types of indications. And so that it's been highly studied. The FDA is overseeing um, what they're doing with this for safety and efficacy. Um, and, uh, and so um, basically uh, the way it, um, it, 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 it seems to me is that this is more like a whole food option, right? And because you've got all of these different fat cofactors and different types of stem cells all together that they're supporting each other. And that's what, uh, there's been a few um, studies that have come out looking at the survivability of these X cells, which is up to three weeks. It's like a minimum of three weeks they're sitting in there. So think about this. If exosomes is a big part of the healing that a stem cell is going to do, right? So stem cell goes into the body, it starts to um, emit all these tiny little vesicles, which shower your existing cells and tissues to get them to go into a regenerative, you know, phase. And each stem cell produces 17 million exosomes per hour. That's on average. If a stem cell only survives for one hour, it's only going to produce that 17 million and then it's done. But can you imagine what an X cell can do if it's going to survive for three weeks and it's producing all those exome, ex, um, exosomes? I mean, the difference is it's like it's almost like over 4,000 times potentially stronger. Damn, son. Damn. 
I've been pretty much obsessed with the principles of quantum energy for years. Before any particle manifests physically, it exists as pure quantum energy, and that includes our bodies. And every person constantly interacts with other quantum energy fields. But things like EMF and toxic air, food, and water diminish our body's energy. And this, my friends, is why I use Leela Quantum products every day. Walk through my house and you'll see them everywhere, like the quantum block on our kitchen island, for example, which we use to charge our food, drink, and supplements to increase their nourishing potential. Leela Quantum develops and studies its quantum products to help mitigate harmful EMF effects, activate the body's self-healing powers, and strengthen our biofield. The pure quantum energy they use is also part of every cell. It's a form of source energy. It's natural and very real. And there's a long list of randomized, placebo-controlled, single- and double-blind studies proving the many effects of Leela Quantum products. Leela Q products neutralize EMF, optimize HRV, and improve the blood. This has been shown in the various studies to which I referred, as you can see for yourself right on their website. To upgrade your life with Leela Quantum's pure quantum energy right now, visit leelaq.com and get 10% off your first order with the code LUKE10. That's L-E-E-L-A-Q, leelaq.com. One thing that I think is interesting about the X cells is um, the IVs, mm-hmm. right? Like we did my hip under ultrasound guidance and I had... Uh, I actually had an MRI and I had a torn labrum and some arthritis in that, in the joint. So super cool to be able to guide it under ultrasound and get them right where you want them. Um, and the fact that they, this particular stem cell is active for so much longer, 4,000 times longer. So it makes sense to do that. Well, it's, it's um, 4,000 times exosomes secretion got it, potential okay. over okay got time, it got yeah. it okay um so that's super cool obviously for localized injections when you're dealing with hips and knees and and stuff like that um but the iv to me is really interesting because you have all these iv clinics popping up everywhere which are great i go get you know vitamin nutrient ivs from time to time we have one down the street that you know alive and well where they're mm-hmm. all the time doing that stuff especially after flying or if you get start to get sick or whatever but it seems like a major missed opportunity for them to not be integrating the stem cells in the IV form. Mm -hmm. Is there any sort of special licensing or anything that a clinic like that would need? Or would this be classified just like a vitamin, you know, a Myers cocktail drip or something like that? Well, I think it would be up to the individual, you know, clinician and um, the clinic in, you know, in our clinic, we have a PA that administers these and it's under a medical doctor's, you know, supervision and, and oversight. So I think a clinic that has, you know, most of the most clinics have a PA, right? I think there's some IV clinics have just nurses that are on staff. And I think that might be, you know, probably not the best way to go about this particular treatment. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it could be a great, um, a great option for a lot of clinics that, might not be offering a lot of the the fancier things like what we're doing at our clinic where, you know, the ultrasound guided orthopedic stuff, um, you know, you have a potential to be able to offer something like this could be, you know, could be really interesting. What's a PA? Um, uh, um, uh, it's a nurse practitioner, a physician assistant. Oh, okay. Kind of both, either one of those, you know, kind of in the same league. Got it. Okay. So what are some other things because when I've I've done two of the IVs with I think like what twenty million stem cells or something oh. crazy <laughs> sounds like a lot. I like that. The more the better. I figure. Yeah. Uh, both times I've done it, I felt freaking amazing for quite a while afterward. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know how you describe it. Just I don't know. Feel younger. You yeah. know what I mean? Just more vital and mental clarity, energy, better mm-hmm. sleep, like mm-hmm. just. A, a very obvious palpable upgrade mm-hmm. that's just general you know yeah. it's just like wow damn i feel like i got a good night's sleep for the past three weeks in a row or something that mm-hmm. kind of feeling you know mm-hmm. um but i'm always looking at ways to improve it so there's things like 
water fasting, um, you know, for the senescence mm -hmm. uh, capacity, right, to get rid of those zombie cells. Um, there's urine autotherapy, which I talked a lot about with Ed Group yesterday. Mm -hmm. He's, he, I think he's the most knowledgeable person I've ever talked to about that, mm -hmm. which is to some people totally insane. I'm, I think I'm already getting trolled. Uh, yeah, I am. <laughs> Cause I posted the interview. Someone in my telegram group's like, Oh, he's the drink your own pee guy. Uh, and I'm like, dude, there's so much science behind it, which yeah. I was unaware of until I talked to him. But one of the things is your, your own urine is full of stem cells. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you have like with mitozen, you have all these different. Uh, well, we're now calling them bullets, which mm -hmm. are uh, you know you you put in the backside, mm -hmm. uh, which is has history in the pharmaceutical industry because there's better absorption when you put something in your rectum than when you swallow it, right? So it's mm -hmm. like maybe even to me better than an IV because you get the longer uh, plasma saturation of whatever mm -hmm. the nutrient is. But you have this stem zen, and um, I've had it in my fridge for a while and i take them here and there but i've never really had a strategic protocol with them so with something like stem zen or urine autotherapy or dry fasting or water fasting would that be something that would maximize the effects after someone did an excel um, therapy treatment yeah i well one of the things that i think is nice about the excels is that they do survive in harsher environments. And so when you start getting into all of the different aspects of improving the patient's health and, and terrain, right? The internal terrain. And what in essence of that is, is just bringing down inflammation, you know, cause when you're toxic, when you have overgrowth of different micro microbes in the body, you know, it's, it's, inf you know, it's inflamed. And so, that's when we're transplanting these stem cells into these more chronic injuries. They're, they're very harsh environments to the most extent. There's a lot of oxidation happening in there. So that's one of the reasons that these X cells work so much better is because they can endure that harsh environment where a lot of the perinatal tissues, you know, they, they don't. So when you start to get into um, putting together plans for people that are going through stem cells and things that will support it. Um, it might not be as necessary in order to get a good result, but then you have this whole act, the idea of biohacking and really maximizing the benefit of them, which you and I really share that, that spirit of, of, yeah, let's just like, you know, maximize the benefits. And so with, um, with stem cells, one of the challenges is they go senescent, right? And so when they're in a harsh environment, there's only there's a percentage of the stem cells that are going to survive and then they're going to survive a certain amount of time and then there's going to be an attrition to eventually they're they're all dead right and so when they go into a senescent state that's a permanent state of of sleepiness and this is the big concern in in stem cells and they've been doing a lot of research trying to like minimize this um this senescent aspect of stem cells and so when I looked into the research, I found that co coenzyme Q10 and phacoidin, which is a brown seaweed from Japan, had really good research showing that it minimized um, mesenchymal stem cell senescence. So we like to have people dose with that. And, and both of these nutrients, and a lot of nutrients aren't very well absorbed orally. I mean, CoQ10, just, it just your liver, first pass through your liver, um, digestive enzymes they it just breaks it down and there's really nothing left same thing with like melatonin and nad and glutathione and i mean you can kind of go down a lot of polyphenols aren't really like curcumin and so that's why we started to produce a lot of these different types of um, su um, suppositories or bullets because that rectal delivery bypasses the, the liver and the gut and you're able to get these nutrients fresh right into the bloodstream so my, my suggestion would be that you would take that for at least a week, but it would probably be a benefit to take it even for that three weeks. You just reminded me of a funny story in, <laughs> in rock and roll history. Uh, there's a famous story, which may or may not be true. I remember when I was a little kid, I don't even know that I, I don't even think I had Kiss music. I don't remember having any Kiss records, but I had a poster on the wall. This is when I'm like five or six years old. 
And I just thought they looked cool. And there was a rumor going around that um, Gene Simmons had cut off his dick with a chainsaw. Oh <laughs> and we God. all believed it. There's funny stuff like that when you're a kid. But a rumor that came later, which is probably closer to true, is because people did this in the 70s, they would, they would blow coke up each other's butts with a straw. Mm-hmm because their noses were blown out from snorting too much. And then they figured out, wow, you get much more high for much longer when you put it up there. Mm -hmm. There's a famous story about um, Fleetwood Mac Mm -hmm. doing that. And Stevie Nicks, that was her her, uh, uh, administration Mm -hmm. point of choice. Yeah. (laughs) Which again, I don't know if it's true, but it's a great story. Yeah. But yeah, it reminds me of that. But that's the thing. I mean, when you think about um, the mucous membrane of your, you know, digestive tract and your intestines and colon rectum all that right it's like the inside of your mouth and Mm -hmm. many of us know if you oh yeah if you want to get uh, molecules into your bloodstream you put it in your mouth and hold it under your tongue right right and so um we were also talking about this with ed group why it's so important to do colon cleansing Mm -hmm. so that you're not reabsorbing you know those toxins in the mucus lining of your um of your colon and whatnot so from that perspective it's always made such perfect sense to me that if you want nutrients and you want to bypass the liver and everything as you described, I mean, that part of your body is kind of just, it. all the blood flow is right there on the surface yeah. of that tissue. It's just waiting to absorb whatever you put in there. And and there's, there's one other thing that's it's as important as the fact that it actually gets into your bloodstream is that it's a slow release over a long period of time. And so our cells have a rate that they can bring nutrients in, like the cell can only pull CoQ10 in for a certain rate. And so you have how much CoQ tends floating outside of the cells. So like the, 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 uh, the, um, how dense, you know, the molecules are, is going to, is going to be important too. So when you do an IV, you're going to have a really high, they call it peak plasma, right? So it's like for an hour, it's going to be like outside of the cells and the cells are going to be pulling it in. And then after that hour, there's nothing to pull in. It's gone. Right versus if you have a nutrient that is in the bloodstream and that peak pl- plasma, which is what happens with bullets, five to seven hours, you can imagine that 500 milligrams administered in a, like our 500 milligram um, glutathione, glutamax, you know, versus if you were to do a push of 500 milligrams, you're going to have a quick peak plasma. And although you're getting it right into the bloodstream, I don't think that you're going to be getting it into the cells as well as if you did a bullet. So in some ways, not only the convenience, because you can do it on your own, you don't have to go to a doctor's office and you can do it every day, multiple times a day if you want, right? So there's that convenience factor, but then you also have this extended factor where those cells, because they have a rate that they can bring nutrients in, ultimately that's what matters is is how much gets into the cell we've done a number of shows in fact i think this might be your eighth appearance on the show <laughs> we'll put all the former shows at lukestory.com slash dr john but yeah you were on 367 380 397 408 422 and 470 and i don't even think the one we just did with josh uh, trent is on that list but um so I want people to know if they want to learn more about any of the things that we just briefly touch on, that we've done exhaustive conversations, especially I think the first one we did was on melatonin. Yeah. And you're the first guy I've ever heard of um, to really you know, write a book about melatonin and do like hardcore research and debunk a lot of the kind of urban legends about it, such mm-hmm. as, oh, if you take melatonin, then it uh, down-regulates your own production, which is proven to be false, et cetera. Um, and so in terms of the slow release and that multi-hour peak plasma, mm-hmm. I mean, there's nothing better for stress recovery, sleep, jet lag than the uh, the Sandman suppositories, which I think, oh yeah, we have some right here. Mm-hmm. So this is two... 250 milligrams of glutathione and 200 milligrams of melatonin. And then all this other rad stuff for sleep, like the magnolia bark and the turpines and essential oils. Yeah. yeah. And all this other stuff, which you never really talk about. You're always just like, Oh, it's a lot of melatonin, but it's like a very synergistic product. But these things I do probably, I don't know, two or three days a week, especially if, if I've gotten a crappy night's sleep and I'm like, Oh man, I really, I got a big day tomorrow. I really need to be knocked out. Mm -hmm. Um, Super epic. Yeah. And I think that 
one of the reasons, and maybe you could speak to this briefly, even though we did a whole show on it. So you have the Sandman Ultra, the oral version, and of course a lot of companies have these very small dose, you know, four milligrams of melatonin. But um, from what I understand from our prior conversations is that when you do melatonin orally, the absorption is not so hot. No, it's it's only two and a half percent absorbed orally. I mean, that's how little of that. And it, again, that's going to be the same thing for things like NAD and glutathione. I mean, most of these molecules are very fragile. So a lot of it doesn't get into the into the bloodstream. We also have a slow released bar, a Sandman bar that we not too long ago released. For, oh, yeah. It's these, really nice for travel. Yeah, these are epic because one thing that I've run into, because the, um, the bullets slash depositories are made of palm oil, you have to keep them refrigerated. Mm -hmm. And so when I travel with them, which I do often, I have to have an ice pack. And then like if I get to an Airbnb or hotel then there's no freezer. There's only a refrigerator, if even that. And then my ice pack's not that cold. So it's like, mm -hmm. eventually I run out of cold. And then if, yeah. if they're kind of melty, they don't go in well and they melt too fast. And it's <laughs> like a whole thing. So when you came out with the Sandman bars, I was like, oh, epic. So I have yeah. these now in my travel kit and I don't need to try to pack the um, suppositories, Yeah, which is super handy. We're really excited about the new Satori bars the um, with the paraxanthine. I know you've had Sean Wells on on here i'm obsessed with paraxanthine in fact nine out of ten shows i have an update drink sitting right here it's like yeah. my it's my secret weapon on mental alertness and mental acuity it's it's, it's a, actually replaced coffee for yeah. me because i and i love the taste of coffee but yeah. i've become over time pretty sensitive to caffeine mm -hmm. and so like i'll pound a coffee especially if i drink one on an empty stomach and i feel good i'm alert but then there's like kind of a law of diminishing returns where i start to like i don't know even like my hands will be a little shaky mm -hmm. like it's like my nervous system is not that into it yeah um so maybe speak to the paraxanthine and and the other thing about the stuff you're doing because travel is so brutal for many of us, uh, yeah. me included, which is why I barely travel. But um, I can't like pack the update drinks with me in my suitcase unless I want it to be 150 pounds and get charged $100 extra or whatever. Right. Yeah. You know, so I was like, when you came out with that, I was like, oh, cool. Because I know Sean Wells, you know, developed that molecule and patented it. So uh -huh. I was like, oh, well, it's only in a, the update drink. That's my only way of getting it. Yeah. So you, you know, I guess you partnered with him and were able to mm -hmm. license it or however that worked and put it in an oral bar. So yeah. maybe break down like what it is and sure. why it's so much more awesome than caffeine well first off you know i uh, updates a great drink i mean they really nailed it with the taste and it's uh, the felt experience and that was one of the first times that um that i used paraxanthine you know i got it i got it from um um ben greenfield it was like two years ago i think that's and, when you first turned me on to it and then yeah. i gave you some right and so we were kind of like wow what is this stuff because it was so cl such clean energy I'd never experienced anything just that clean before. And, um, and so um, I was able to get in touch with Sean and Sean, I've become really good, um, really close friends. And in fact, he was just at my clinic and we did um, a bunch of stem cells on him with the XL. So um, I think he's going to be releasing something on his social media about his experience. Cause we videotaped it and oh, it was cool. pretty amazing. But um, what I found with caffeine is that, you know, there's basically three metabolites. There's theobromine, um, there's uh, paraxanthine, and then there's um, theophylline, right? And so caffeine in general is really like a toxin that plants make in order to repel insects. And so um, what Sean was able to discover is that if you just isolate the paraxanthine, that that seems to be the the part of the caffeine that gives us all of the benefit that we love, right? The, the, the focus, the attention, um, enhancing memory, energy. Um, but then when most people, and 60% of the population, I didn't realize this, but literally 60% of the population has this CY, um, it's a uh, CYPY gene that doesn't allow them to break it down very quickly. So it lasts sometimes for some people, even like, multiple days and there's you know muscle tension you feel anxious you can feel anxiety 
Um, there's, um, there's negative effects that people, uh, find with, with caffeine, especially if you take more than what your body can, can deal with, right? The slow metabolizers, like the people that have a coffee at nine in the morning and can't sleep that night. Right. <laughs> you know, all yeah. those hours later. So what they found with paraxanthine is it's actually quite the opposite that, that your sleep actually improves if you take paraxanthine that day. Of course, you don't want to necessarily take it like late at night either, because it's going to give you some energy, but, um, paraxanthine is also shown to um, significantly increase something called BDNF, which is brain-derived neurotropic factor. That, that allows us to learn and um, create new connections with our, with our nerves. That's like called neuroplasticity. So this is something that I think could really be great for people that are doing, you know, that are into athletics or they're, um, they're studying or they're learning or they're doing therapy if they're doing, you know, different types of um, ceremonies with plant medicine. I think that paraxanthine could be really interesting to be part of that because of how it works so well with, with BDNF. And in fact, what they found is that when people went back to different learning tasks, that over time, the paraxanthine seemed to be more and more effective versus with caffeine, you have to keep you take more and more over time. Paraxanthine doesn't seem to have that um, accommodation factor. Uh, it increases dopamine by 50%, increases serotonin. So it has all these really amazing qualities to it. And um, it doesn't seem to have the negative that the, the other two metabolites seem to be mostly responsible for. So we're basically, uh, um, Sean's able to purify it. We buy that and then we package it into, we have a suppository and we have a bar um, and we have um, 20 milligrams of methylene blue in the bar. There's something called Bacopa, alpha GCP, which is really, really great for memory. It's one of my favorite um, brain um, substances I've ever tried because I really notice how much better I can remember things when I would take alpha GCP. And it's got some other Ayurvedic herbs that are enhancing blood flow to the brain. Um, and the, the difference between the suppository version of Satori and the the bar is that both of them have 200 milligrams of paraxanthine, but there's more space to put more of the alpha GCP and more of the bacopa and more of the herbs in the suppository version versus the, 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 the bars. Right. Cause the bars would be too big to swallow. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, funny, you know, I took two of the Satori's this morning because, uh, as you know, our dog cookie was, I don't know, she, busted her ass and like was having a really rough night. So I barely slept. Um, and I was like, Oh man, we got to do this podcast. Oh, shit. I don't mm. podcast well on little sleep. So I was like, I'm going to double up. And it's interesting because as I'm sitting here, I'm kind of tracking my anxiety level. Mm -hmm. If I had had two cups of coffee, I would be a nervous wreck and not chill, but mm. maybe awake, mm -hmm. you know, and don't feel tired. And maybe my brain would be a little sharper, but I feel totally relaxed. Mm hmm but I don't feel like I got a shitty night's sleep. Yeah. It's pretty epic. You had a pretty high dose of the paraxanthine from my recollection. You did two of the bars. Which, oh, and I also drank like half an update, right? Oh, uh, yeah, woke right. Up too. But I, you yeah. know, uh, Sean um, is very clear that he recommends, you know, anywhere from 100 to 300 milligrams. Um, and, you know, personally, I found that I prefer the 400 milligrams, which is basically two um, squares now. Um, uh, I'd say anybody that's starting out with taking the, the paraxanthine, you know, start with the lower dose and see how you do. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's just such a clean, noticeable energy. There's no jitters. It's like, um, it's all of the, it's all of the, it, none of the frazzle with all the dazzle, I think is what Sean Wells ah, says, I like right? That. It's true. It's true. I'm um, going back to the IVs versus suppositories. Um, you know, NAD is becoming pretty popular because people are learning more about mitochondrial function and ATP production and whatnot. So you have uh, a lot of the IV clinics have these NID, NAD drips. And uh, I was doing them a few years ago in LA. And they're like, at that time, it was like $1,500. And mm -hmm. I don't know, it'd take about an hour. And depending on your constitution, the time spent and the level of discomfort would be basically how fast they fire up the IV, right? Yeah. Like how fast the drip is. 
So you would get like these cramps in your stomach and just start feeling kind of weird. And you'd be like, mm-hmm. oh, I better slow it down. And now you've just added another half an hour to that, right? Mm-hmm. But more than anything, I mean, the physical discomfort's one thing, but just super expensive and just not viable for yeah. many people, mm-hmm. especially if you want the compound effects of, you know, doing NAD for the rest of your life or doing cycles of it where you, you know, do a few uh, a year or something like that. So it's just not sustainable. Um the number one crappy night sleep or travel hack that I've ever discovered is your NAD uh, suppositories. And that's the one thing I will travel with and mm-hmm. do the ice pack and everything. Yeah. So even if I only bring a couple of the bullets, it's like at least if I have one in on the flight there and the flight home, and I'll also do the glutathione ones, I, mm. I stack those. I don't know if that's a good idea, but. Oh, yeah. That's okay. It Se- seems to work because of the, um, you know, the oxidative stress mm-hmm. involved in travel and just the yeah, mental and emotional that's a nice stress combo. and all that. Have you tried the combo with the methyl max and the NAD? Yeah, I have. That's, that's kind of my go to if i really need some support the methyl methylators are like your b vitamins and your folic acid and so like you know like people go to get ivs it's like a myers cocktail so this would be kind of like our version of a myers cocktail with the methyl max and combining that with the nad and it's not surprising that it's helping you with travel so much uh, because um stressors deplete the crap out of your NAD levels, you know, like lack of sleep is a big stressor. You know, you lose NAD, um, any type of alcohol or drugs like these. And that's why there's uh, NAD is so popular, has become popular at, um, rehab centers because people's NAD, the reason that people are so miserable and they don't want to talk to anybody and they're not social is because they have like virtually no ability to make any energy at a mitochondrial level. And so when we can't make energy, one of the biggest things for a really, you know, poor functioning brain is depression. If you look up just about all neurological conditions, you know, a lot, you know, that, that aspect of the brain going south really has to do with poor mitochondrial function in the most, for the most part, because the brain's the most metabolically sensitive. And so it requires the most amount of energy. So when our energy levels start to diminish from poor mitochondrial function, then it's neurological issues that are going to suffer first. So things like depression and mood are going to be like some of the first things that start to kick in. And, um, and so anybody that's kind of dealing with a lot of depression, you know, um, you want to start thinking about wh- what types of things you can do to improve your, your energy uh, at a cellular level. And the biggest low lying fruit is, looking for things that are causing inflammation in your body because it's that inflammation that's going to have that negative effect on your um on on those mitochondria because then the mitochondria go into what's called a cell danger response and so kind of i this might sound kind of complicated if people have been following me or listening to me it's starting to maybe gel but all of our products are kind of like geared towards kind of handling this root cause of a lot of different um, conditions associated with um, um, with lack of support that the body's giving you to be healthy and vital. Hence the name mitozen, mm-hmm. you know, going after the mitochondria. Let's talk about hormones. They have a massive impact on your physical and even mental health. But when your hormones are low or out of balance... They can make life dull and dry and lead to lethargy, fatigue, and even reduced sex drive. Womp womp. Now, one of the keys to hormonal health is giving your body all of the minerals that go into making the hormones that support energy, drive, and performance. The problem is that between industrial farming, environmental toxins, and declining food quality, it's almost impossible to get enough minerals from diet alone. Enter Beam Minerals, 100% natural, plant-based, and bioavailable. Their tasteless liquid formulas are the easiest way I've found to cover all my bases and make sure I'm ready for action at all times. They provide every essential mineral the body needs, all in a single one-ounce shot, which I happen to take every morning and even sometimes at night. The Beam Minerals have no fillers or preservatives, just the purest fulvic and humic compounds sourced directly from the earth. So if you want to function as nature intended, hit up beamminerals.com and use the code LOOP20 to get 20% off. Oh, and I should also mention that beam minerals are certainly not just for men. 
women naturally go through periods of mineral deficiency in response to menstruation, childbirth, and menopause. So symptoms like cramping, sleep issues, and mood swings can actually be signs of mineral depletion. So be you man or woman, if you want to support optimal hormone health, you need the micronutrients in Beam Minerals. Again, visit beamminerals.com and use the code LOOP20. What about um, methylene blue? You know, this is something you work with a lot. Um, <laughs> I've had, uh, I don't know how many methylene blue IVs now at your clinic, which mm -hmm. is just like wildly awesome. Mm -hmm. And then the intravenous red laser and mm -hmm. like adding the gold and silver to it and all these things you do to optimize it. Uh, but you've also been uh, innovating different methylene blue products. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them. The blue eyes? Yeah, being the. Uh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> it's difficult when you have a bunch of tiny little products. So this one, people yeah. watching the video, blue eyes. Um, now I'm going to be honest, this one made me a little nervous because I'm just like, I don't, I mean, methylene blue stains the crap out of everything. I'm sure this yeah. is diluted. It's not like, you know, pure methylene blue, but um, I was like, I don't know, maybe John's gone off the rails with this. Uh, and I've used it a few times, but I'm kind of like nervous for some reason. Yeah. It doesn't like turn your eyes blue all day or anything like that. So mm. um, like it would, if you just put a drop, it would probably fry your eyes out. And then I forget who it was. Maybe it was Ben Greenfield or someone posted about your blue eyes. And then I saw um, Jack Cruz come in and like dog pile on it. And, you know, he's a really, really smart guy. And I really respect him. He's been on the show a number of times. And one of my all time uh, most celebrated guests, like his episodes are still in my top 10 after years. I think he's my number one YouTube video. Uh, in fact, um, and he, you know, he knows a lot about mitochondria and methylene blue. He's a proponent of that. And I forget what he said, but he was like, oh, this is the worst idea ever. Who is this John guy? It's going to burn your eyes out or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then I texted you. I was like, dude, what's up with this? Because Jack's really smart. But with all due respect to Jack, he is very contrarian. And his knowledge base flies in the face of a lot of things that to me have a lot of valid research. Like he's come in my Facebook group and be like, oh, hyperbaric oxygen sucks and ozone therapy is bullshit and things. I'm like, well, but dude, there's so much research behind mm -hmm. this and so much anecdotal evidence from clinical experience of practitioners. You know, I'm like, what? And I'm sure it's a more nuanced issue. Maybe hyperbaric's not good for certain people at certain times. And I I'm sure that's the case. But it kind of got my attention because I respect him a lot. So I sent you a text and you're like, actually, mm -hmm. here's the here's the data on it. And this is how we're yeah. doing it. And it's actually not harmful to your eyes. It's really good for your eyes and so mm -hmm. on. So maybe you could speak to kind of how this particular product um, sure. works in the eyes and to assuage any concerns that people might have. Yeah. Well, so um, everyone's entitled to their opinion, obviously. And there is... Um, an incident that happened where so there's um, some conditions of the eyes where they want to inject a, um, a staining agent so that they can see things a little bit more clearly. But the typical staining agent um, that w is, was usually used was replaced by methylene blue with this one particular case. And this um, they came and looked at the, the individual and they um, came to the conclusion that methylene blue was toxic to certain receptors in the eyes um, based on this procedure, but the procedure was a very, very large dose injected into the eye, right? And so what blue eyes is, is it's a very dilute, um, um, it's with um, quinton mineral, deep sea water, and um, there's um, gold and silver and a little bit of peppermint. So there's like this nice kind of like fresh feeling with it, but it's, it's literally like less than a milligram you know, per drop in the eye. So it's a very, very small amount, but enough to kind of support um, some of the cells. So it, you're not even comparing, you know, apples to apples with this. Um, there's a, um, a French company that manufactures a, a methylene blue eye drop, and they've been around for a long, long time. And there's no reports of any challenges that anybody's had with them. So it's something that's been around and it's been used. So, um, I kind of put it together for 
there was a variant of COVID that was hitting some friends of mine in Miami. And so I'm like, oh, so I, I called my, um, my lab and I said, would you put together um, an eye drop with um, colloidal silver and methylene blue? And I was thinking this is going to be really good to like uh, as an antimicrobial for this individual. And it worked great. And since then I've had tons of reports back of people that have used the blue eyes and seen just a lot of um, improvement when it comes to different types of microbial issues, styes and infections and different types of things like that. So it has a really great utility like that. I think it, it, it really belongs in everybody's medicine cabinet for that reason alone. But then I started to, cause you know, I'd like to do sun gazing and I like to ground and I like to do breath work and I have like these routines that I'm in, involved with. And so I started taking the blue eyes down to the beach with me while I was doing my sun gazing and I was dropping into my eyes and I was ma- keeping my eyes open. And I was letting the photons pick up the signature of the, and then we added gold to it, obviously. So I've got the gold and the silver, which enhance the photo biomodulation capacity to the methylene blue. And I was really noticing that it seemed to kind of like have an effect on my brain. And I felt more clear. I felt more grounded and there was like a, an alertness is not a, not like a um, anxiety alertness, but there was just this ability to really just focus and my meditations felt more powerful. And then, you know, you look at the light going into your eyes goes through the suprachiasmic nucleus and then it goes to your pineal. So using photobiomodulation to support that whole kind of situation prior to go, dropping into meditation. I also like to use it periodically throughout the day as just kind of like a, you know, uh, something to help with freshness. I was out with um, um, Garrett McNamara and we went to Nazare and he, he took me out there and he towed me into a 40 foot wave on his jet ski. Right. And if anybody watched the HBO special, um, hundred foot wave, like this was like going to Disneyland with Mickey mouse. Right. And I took the blue eyes with me and there was some cameramen out there. And I like the thing about Nazare is when you're watching it, the waves are always like really cranking towards the later part of the day. And so you've got this glare that's insane. So you're trying to watch the waves, but, and so I noticed that when I was using the blue eyes, it like really minimized the glare. And so I started sharing it with a lot of the cameramen, the HBO cameramen, and we, we, a couple, uh, not too long ago, we posted a video from um, Laurent, who is like one of the, you know, they won an, they won six Emmys, by the way, for last season. Like it's pretty epic. So he's an, an Emmy award winning cinematographer for HBO. And he posted a video and he absolutely loves it. He notices that he can, his vision's clearer. And so this is another thing that we're seeing people report back is that um, they're, they're, they're finding that it seems to be enhancing the clarity of their vision a bit. I need that. I'm going to try some right now. Okay. Don't try this at home. So don't squint your eyes. So drop it into your eye and like, let it just kind of soak there. Okay. While I'm doing that, you'll have to keep talking. Okay. (laughs) All right. Yeah. The number one rule of radio, no dead air. Yeah. So, yeah. So the, there's like just... It doesn't sting, but there's kind of like this initial kind of like cooling sensation. And if anybody's been to Asia, like if you go to um, Japan in particular, like all the eye drops that you buy out there, they all have like this little bit of peppermint in it. And I remember just loving that, you know, because it's like this. It feels good. Yeah. Really fresh. Yeah. It's interesting that you put the Quinton uh, isotonic in there because when I interviewed... um, Robert Slovak a few years ago, the guy that was largely responsible, if not totally responsible for bringing that from France to the States. He told me on the down low that you can, you know, fill up a dropper bottle and put it in your eyes. He's like, he didn't, I don't think recommended it publicly or whatever, um, because you want to keep it refrigerated, make sure it's sterile and whatnot. Right. But, um, so I've been doing that ever since. Anytime I have dry eyes or fatigued eyes, I'll squirt some uh, Quinton, not the hypertonic no. For anyone listening, yeah. it's super salty, not going to be fun, uh-huh. but the isotonic, much less salty and um, essentially like very similar to blood plasma, right? I mean, it's a very yes. bioidentical substance from the ocean. And mm-hmm. um, so that's like my go-to. So that was one thing I noticed when you made this. I was like, that's cool. But I did want to double check on the safety of the methylene blue because I'm like, I don't want to do anything that would hurt my eyes, obviously. And not like you're going to put something out that's dangerous, but when Jack Cruz said that, I was like, wait, he's super smart. Is he onto something? I got paranoid about it. Yeah. 
Well, so you know, I, I, I always like to do things myself for a period of time and, and for sure, like above all, do no harm. Um, so I, I feel extremely comfortable that this is a, it's a really nice um, thing to, uh, to be able to boost the eyes. There's not a lot of things out there for us to really give the eyes like a nice boost, you know, and when you're talking about something like um, methylene blue and gold and silver, all of them are so photodynamic and the eyes, that's the primary sensory is photons and light, right? So it's really um, very, very proud of this formula. I think this is a really, really amazing gift for uh, for a lot of people that are enjoying it. The other uh, thing that's super cool that you're doing is the uh, Lumatol Blue, the bars. Mm-hmm. Um, now there are some liquid versions of methylene blue out there for oral administration, but uh, they're very problematic because they turn your mouth blue as hell for many hours. And that's mm-hmm. not always comfortable for some people. I mean, if you're at work at a nine to five, like people are going to freak out, you know, yeah. it's like, then yeah. you got to answer the questions or where you go, Oh, it's this thing called methylene blue. What's that? It's like, it's just exhausting to explain it to people. If nothing else, even if you're not embarrassed about it, um, and IVs of methylene blue obviously are not practical for mm-hmm. many people. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it's very well absorbed orally. I think you and I were having a conversation last night about the microbiome. And this is a point that um, Mercola has been bringing up in his podcast about um, some potential um, risks associated with taking methylene blue as it relates to your microbiome. Because as we know, it's antimicrobial, Right. And so um, they, there's one study that I could find, and um, there's some bacteria that do really well. Some of the beneficial bacteria actually in, increase, um, and uh, a lot of the the, neg- the bad bacteria. In fact, most all of the ones they were looking at went down. So it was like positive in that sense. But there was a, a couple that went down a little bit, right? So it was it had a negative effect on some of the strains, and so. Because of that, you know, I believe that it is something that we need to pay attention to. And for that reason, I don't recommend that we take methylene blue, whereas it's going to get into the colon. And so that's why um, I think you're like an, a capsule could actually make its way down pretty deep into your gut. And in the small intestines, methylene blue can kind of irritate the small intestines, which could potentially lead to like some leaky gut stuff and some inflammation. And then in the large intestines, it could have a negative effect on the microbiome. So we want it to absorb primarily in the stomach. And Frank, Francisco Gonzalez Lima, who's actually, I think, here in your neighborhood, foremost authority of methylene blue, um, he he's he's made statements to say that it's the most um the stomach is where it's absorbed you know very well right so we don't need to do ivs with methylene blue unless we're using it to do an iv and then use red light on the blood like what we did with with you at the clinic and that um luma blue iv protocol that we did so that leaves the drops and then that leaves the bar is basically a suspension in um in uh, palm oil and so you drop that in the back of your throat, you drink something down, and it's going to all completely absorb in the stomach. So um, if you don't want your mouth to turn blue, you know, um, some people want that. I think some people think it looks cool. But, yeah, for some, it's a conversation starter, you know. Yeah. I mean, you can um, stain, you know, aspects of your teeth and oh, got dude, veneers. Uh, it's, my friend uh, Kyle Kingsbury, who we bo- he turned me on to my dentist, um, uh, Dr. Winters, who gave me new teeth because I my old ones were worn out beyond repair. Uh, but the way they do that is first they put something called uh, an orthotic in, which is just like two big pieces of fake plastic teeth because they're rebuilding your bite and your jaw. They're moving all this stuff around, right, to give you like the proper uh, bite and to ease up the, you know, the space and behind your jaw and your ears and all the thing, right? So um, <laughs> Kyle did oral methylene blue when he had the plastic temporaries in and they stayed mm-hmm. in them permanently blue. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, so I had to go in and have them change, you know, because you do that for a couple months before they put in the porcelain oh, ones, man. you know. Yeah, so I was like, oh, that Uh-oh. made me paranoid about the oral. Yeah. But another thing before we move on, because we're we only have about fifteen minutes, and I want to talk about the prostate treatment. Um, 
the other thing is that people should be aware of is that not all methylene blue is created equal, right? A lot of this is made in some dirty ass lab in China and it's mm-hmm. full of heavy metals and mold. And there's, from what I understand, there's only a couple suppliers in the world that have true pharmaceutical USP grade right. tested super clean methylene blue, which I think is something that's really important. So this is yeah. not the kind of thing just go on Amazon and like, oh, I'll just look for the cheapest methylene blue. Bad idea. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know I've talked to you about yours, and it's like super legit. Well, we we get it with testing and a certificate of authenticity, right, a COA. But then we also do our we send it out and test it independently. Um, so I that's a big deal for me. You know, I think you know these these different um, uh, substances. You know, they're made industrially. You know, if they're not made in more um, clean environments, you know, you can get some some really nasty, you know, like mostly it's heavy metals when it's associated with methylene blue. Right. So you don't want to just go on and get like your, your aquarium cleaning solution. Yeah. That's probably not going to be the safest way to go. I agree. Uh, Another thing that I'll add uh, to give you kudos is that even the, some of the other methylene blue products on the market that are, I think safe and legitimate are hella expensive. I mean, it Mm -hmm. is like one of the most expensive supplements and your bars are the most affordable version that I found, especially because they're made so you can break them into four pieces. And Mm -hmm. like even a quarter piece is a substantial dose depending on your body weight. Yeah. So it's like one of those little packs last you forever. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I have three of them in my fridge or something that's, I can't even get through them Mm because I only, I only usually do a quarter or a half at a time, you know? And you can take large doses if you're feeling like you're coming down with something or if you're sick or like I'm traveling, you know, I'm on my way actually to Maui to do some, breathwork event with Pavel, you know, and so in the middle of traveling, it's pretty stressful. So I'm kind of at like 180, 200 milligram a day mark, but usually I'm at 40, you know, 45 to 90 milligrams a day. And that's about the sweet spot. You know, it's, you want about um, between 0.5 to four milligrams per kilogram of body weight. And on a daily basis, you probably wouldn't want to be on the lower end of that. Right. But in, in key times where you really need the support, you know, it's okay to, to really up that dose. What about the half-life of it, though? Because I've heard some say that uh, it stays in your system for 72 hours or something. So you, it, you, you'll you unknowingly yeah. be creating a compound effect if you take it every it, day. Exactly. It builds up. And so that's why we'll recommend people take a couple of days off, you know, every so often. And every everybody's metabolism is a little bit different. Like you're going to pee blue after you take it. And sometimes people don't pee blue. And if you're consuming a lot of vitamin C rich foods, or if you're taking vitamin C, then it could convert the the, um, methylene blue to leuco methylene blue, which is clear, it's white. And so that that can happen. Um, But the methylene blue has an affinity to the mitochondria. So it goes into the mitochondria and then it, um, it stays there for a certain period of time and it can build up in the mitochondria. And when you get to that point where it starts to build up too much, you have an opposite effect and you don't get the energizing and all the benefits, you know, mood uplifting and all those things that were associated with methylene blue, it starts to take an opposite effect. And so then if you go get off of it for a few days, you can start taking it and start getting that benefit again. Oh, and you know, we, I just had my book come out, you know, it was a couple of months ago called magic bullet and it's on Amazon and we go deep into all, all things methylene blue. Cool. I have it on my desk. I haven't read it yet. It's like one of 50 books that I'm supposed to read and haven't got to, uh, for people that we're going to talk about the prostate stuff now in the last few minutes. Um, for people that want to try mitozen, go to mitozen.com, use the code Luke story for 5% off. We'll also put that in the show notes at lukestory.com slash Dr. John. Uh, what's the deal with the membership thing? It's like, if, cause because your stuff is super advanced, it can't just be over the counter. So you have a membership that's what, like $10 for a lifetime membership? Yeah. So yeah, people will sign up for that and mm-hmm. then they have access to all the different products. Right. You, you, only members can shop the, uh, the okay. store, right? And so it's to access the store, it's a $10 lifetime membership. And that allows us to provide not just very advanced formulas and deliveries and delivery um, um, systems, but also there's a little bit deeper education. We have what's called a mitobrary there. 
And we, I think you and I have a breath work session that I videoed on Siesta Beach that I've put on that and how we're using the MitoZen products with doing breath work. And so I, I have some of our um, events, like the event that we did, um, Elements of Vitality, um, those are all free to members. So there's like all this great, like for just for that alone is worth Cool. The price of 10 bucks. Cool. Okay. I just want to make that clear for people when they get there. So they're like, wait, what's happening? So I know some of you might think the life of a podcaster is easy, but even I can get stressed out with work, travel, staying on top of my personal life, and just coping with this ever wacky world of ours. That's why I want to share with you one of the best ways I've found to relax and reduce stress in my life, using the Bond Charge Infrared Sauna Blanket. Bond Charge is an awesome company. They've got a huge range of wellness products that help you perform better, recover faster, reduce inflammation. The list is practically endless. And one of my favorite Bond Charge products is their Infrared Sauna Blanket, man. It's the fastest, simplest way I've found to de-stress after getting off a plane, recovering from a workout, or finishing a marathon recording session like I often do. And here's a great travel hack for you. If I'm heading out of town, the blanket is super portable. I can just roll it up, throw it in the trunk, and boom, I've got an easy way to mellow out when I get to my destination. It sets up in less than a minute and heats up super fast. Now, lucky for you right now, they are offering listeners 15% off your purchase of this phenomenal product. Just punch in bondcharge.com slash lifestylist and use the code lifestylist to get your discount. That's B-O-N-C-H-A-R-G-E dot com slash lifestylist. And for you EMF mitigators out there, don't worry, you know, I got you covered. They've tested their blanket against other leading brands and their EMF levels are one of the lowest on the market. You can find all those details and more at bondcharge.com slash lifestylist. And don't forget to use that code lifestylist to get your 15% off. Two times ago at your clinic, we did uh, some testing and found that I had uh, an inflamed prostate. And mm-hmm. that is due to bacterial overgrowth, dysbiosis kind of thing. It's kind of a closed system in there, a cavity that doesn't get much blood flow. So for men, it's as you age, it's very prone to these um, chronic infections. And so we did um, ozone injections the first time. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the most recent time I was there, you had... Uh, further developed that protocol where you're doing the uh, testing to determine the specific strains of bacteria and then applying for injection very specific antibiotics targeting the most problematic bacteria and you're still doing the ozone Mm -hmm. and then you've added methylene blue which as you said is a really powerful antimicrobial and so um that's the most recent thing we did, which was like super cool. Mm -hmm. And I got to say from the first time I did it, it wasn't like painful, but there was a couple moments. It was like, Oh, that feels weird. Mm -hmm. This most recent one we did. I mean, I only had one little kind of contraction where that I felt kind of full and just weird. So whatever you're doing with the lidocaine and like the Mm -hmm. numbing situation, I literally was just laying there, like nothing happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And then it was followed up by, and this is going to sound super weird to people, but I'm super weird because um, methylene blue is so photodynamic Mm -hmm. that it's really um, exponentially more powerful if you hit it with 660 nanometer red light. So I guess someone you're working with created a kind of a scepter Mm -hmm. that goes in uh, the the rear and Mm -hmm. uh, and points and touches the prostate and shines that super powerful red light on it while the methylene blue is saturating the prostate, which is super interesting. Yeah, the Lumo wand. Yeah, it's right. We have it sitting right in front of us. Oh, yeah. Let me let me grab it. Yeah, actually. Yeah. So this, this, um, but here, and here, here's the thing I want to say too. Yeah. And, and, and you can speak to this more. Okay. Here's, here's, here's the wand guys. Uh, yeah. It's not as uncomfortable as you might think, fellas. It's really barely Turn noticeable. Uh, so yeah, look at that. That's 750 milliwatts in yeah. that small amount. So that's really, really powerful. Uh, that red is light. Super powerful. You can see it goes right through my hand. Yeah. Um, so, the reason for those that think like this sounds insane or extreme or why would you want to do that 
you could speak to how prevalent this issue of uh, just prostate problems as men over 40, over 50, over 60, and that it's, I think, the second leading cause of prostate cancer or something. Mm -hmm. or, yeah, over it's the like, age of 40. Yeah, like prostate cancer doesn't just like, it's not a normal, natural thing as it's kind of like presented to be like, oh, it's just what happens when you get older. Mm -hmm. I'm not interested in that. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I don't care if I need to use a scepter, have injections or whatever, I'm not having it. And and, um, and also it's very uncomfortable as you get older, if you have to wake up in the middle of the night or to pee or what I've noticed as I've gotten older and had these infections is like, I'm just sitting here and all of a sudden I'm like, I'm about to pee my pants out mm -hmm. of the blue. It's like, what is happening? You know? So I don't want to live like that. Uh, right. And I don't yeah. want to have cancer later and all those things. So for those listening that think like this sounds wacky, uh, this is what you got to do, you know, in today's mm. day and age, unfortunately, um, if you want to avoid having those problems, I would rather preemptively handle it than try to handle something that's much harder to deal with later. Mm -hmm. So yeah. give us the the lowdown on that in our last couple minutes here. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I had been, um, I had a friend, it was a very close friend and he was very ill and he came to me and said, you know, I'm going to fly to California and I'm going to have this doctor inject my prostate with an antibiotic. And he says, it's actually like a, a bunch of antibiotics he throws together and he injects it. And, and I thought he was crazy, you know, and he just, I guess, intuitively, he was very intuitive. He just felt like this was going to be the answer. So he, lo and behold, he comes back and he feels amazing. And he started to feel sick again. He went and did it, did it again last time I checked with him and it worked again. So that was the first time that, you know, I kind of, um, had my uh, myself opened up to the fact that there might be something kind of important there. And then I did an internship with um, Frank Schallenberger, who, you know, people know as the father of ozone, and he's just really amazing individual, and um, learned about this ozone injection into the prostate. And I think in the beginning, that's what you had done at the clinic. And that's what we started with. And we started to utilize that um, with people with various prostate issues. And then we actually started to test people where it really started to get interesting as we came across a lab out of Orlando in Florida, not too far from me. And they're doing next generation sequencing, which is really sensitive. So most of the research, when you start to look at, okay, like what's really the deal with prostate problems? Like what's the, the root cause of these? Um, and I would offer that it's, it's infection, right? And so when you look at the two um, common things that could be diagnosed with a prostate, and this would be a man that's having, you know, difficulty initiating a stream, urination, frequent urination, urgency, waking up a lot at night, you could feel discomfort or pain down around that area. Um, infertility is a big thing as well. Um, so if, um, uh, it's it's normal and it's just accepted that after a certain age the prostate swells at a certain rate and our prostate swells and they call that benign prosthetic hypertrophy so it's benign saying yeah it's just normal this is what happens with men um, and when you look at the research the research basically tells you that it's based on androgenic receptors in the prostate and so that's the whole thing with people with prostate cancer, they take them off of testosterone, right? Um, so they even give them drugs to drop their testosterone almost to zero. I mean, these people are miserable, right? They got no libido at all. Um, and DHT is another um, uh, kind of a byproduct of testosterone that has an effect with like, not just hair loss, but also prostate issues. And so um, there's some interesting studies that I read that talk about how even though the testing, whatever testing they did, didn't find a microbe. They weren't doing next generation sequencing. And a lot of these people aren't even testing for things like funguses and molds. And so there's a lot of potential things that have been missed. But what they did find is they found that there was inflammation there. And the, the researchers were saying, well, even with all of these benign prosthetic hypertrophy cases, the inflammation that's there is causing this oxidative stress that's changing the receptors to be more um, sensitive to androgenic stimuli. And so even if we're seeing this effect with testosterone and DHT with the prostate, it still could be underlying, and I would postulate it is, 
that there is an undiagnosed infection with benign prosthetic hypertrophy, probably virtually all of them. The other diagnosis that you might get is prostatitis. And so prostatitis is typically, you know, it is an infection and it's treated with antibiotics, but most of the time these antibiotics would be taken orally and it's not very effective, right? Because the prostate's kind of like a, se a, a separate area. It's kind of walled off from your general circulation. And so infections can find their way, their way into that prostate gland and just fester for years and years and you can never really get rid of them. So I started to... Um, we started to test and we started to see, wow, you know, a, virtually every test that we're doing is coming up with this collection of, um, of microbes. So the, the test comes back and it allows us to match the antibiotics because they, they will tell you which antibiotics they're sensitive to. And so we're able to create a custom antibiotic um, mixture. We add methylene blue into that injection. Um, we also um, spin the blood down and we put white blood cells in there. And so that injection's done under ultrasound. It's, in, it's injected into the two sides of the prostate, the two lobes. So there's two injections done. And then we inject um, ozone after that. And we're seeing some really exciting results with um, people clearing their infection. The, res the, the post results are coming back, um, you, know, the, um, you know, clear of the infections and then the symptoms that a lot of people are complaining about. So after we do the injection, the one challenge that we had was utilizing light because if you if you donate blood at the blood banks, the way that they sterilize the blood is they in, they put methylene blue in with that blood and then they ex expose it to to the six sixty nanometers the red light, and that combination is very very great for antimicrobials like the IV that we do the Luma Blue where we're putting a high dose of um, methylene blue into the veins and then we're putting a, literally a catheter with a red light into the vein and so we're able to really have a nice antimicrobial and this is something that I like to do for everything from Lyme to Epstein-Barr to HIV to different types of herpes so I know the power of combining light and methylene blue so the problem has been how do we get light so we had this we call a mito wand, which is a vaginal, um, you know, light, but it's fairly large. <laughs> That's the problem is like the, the diameter, right? The circumference Not of so this. Not so comfortable for the fellas. So, so the men, yeah. And, and it wasn't very powerful. You know, it was just kind of something that we, we had made. Um, and, and so the lights, but then I, uh, about, you know, six months ago, I got connected with this fellow that is like a total OG in the red light in, in photo, you know, photobiomodulation and light therapy and LEDs. And he was the one of the people that kind of invented, if you ever had your cavities filled, where um, they'll take that blue light, they put the cement in and they put the blue light in it and it like cures it like in 30 yeah, seconds. Yeah. So he knew the power of light acting on a substance, that photodynamic aspect. And so when he was um, asked to produce something for someone that had to do with actually healing like a musculoskeletal complaint, he got really into it. And so he's been producing some of the most powerful LEDs and red light devices, you know, like the, um, the, uh, the Luma, the Luma wand, which you have there is very, very powerful. And it's, and it's very sleek. And this is something that um, we're able to use after we do the injection to really light up that prostate to get that full, complete, full um, benefit that I think we're able to get with that methylene blue. I love it. I'm not trying to get prostate cancer when I'm 80, dude. No, I know. I'll do whatever it takes. So for people, uh, you know, again, w w females listening, this might be something really good to share with the men in your life, especially older men, you know, over 40. Well, um, you can give, you, the man can give that to the woman. So if the woman's having cr um, chronic, you know, UTIs or vaginal infections, then it could be because they're getting it from their, their uh, lover. Because it's leaking out from the prostate. Yeah. Interesting. And it's interesting because that we're actually getting a lot of referrals of men to at least get their prostate checked, right? So it's like we have like a handful of men that are showing up and they do not want to be there. 
and right. the their woman has said you got to go get checked <laughs> and then lo and behold there's infection and then they're like on the table and they don't want to be there but they're you right. know so, so as far as the testing that can obviously be done remotely like someone can contact advanced rejuvenation yeah dot us and call you guys and uh, well, i'm assuming we'll, you know we can do a link that goes to so it's a um um it's it's kind of like a, a kit that we we send out that you can get your prostate tested and then it comes with reviewing the um, findings with one of our team members. Oh, cool! And so um, I think it's a no brainer for anybody really over the age of forty. You know, even if you're not having any problems, you know, I think the test. So it's a semen test. You collect the semen and also your urine, and they kind of compare the two. And it's not that expensive. The test, right? Was it one hundred fifty bucks? Or it's like one hundred and fifty, two hundred dollars, yeah. no, all in. Yeah. And then if someone found the test results to be problematic then they would need to come to your clinic in sarasota in order to get the treatment obviously yeah so we do a series of three and so um it's not it, it doesn't have to be three but that's what we're finding the best results so most people can get that done in a little over a week or some people come in you know and you can separate the, that out you know, four to six weeks apart as well, if you're not able to stay that full amount of time. Okay, cool. But most people walk out, it's not a real uncomfortable procedure. Um, it's, uh, it, you feel like you have to pee a little bit for, for a period of time. Um, but, but it's very well um, tolerated. And um, we, we have sedation options. I, I really recommend most people using the nitrous gas, you know, the, the laughing gas. Yeah, that's it kinda, what I did the first time. It, yeah, it kind of makes you, yeah. And a little ketamine. I was I was pretty high, to be honest. Uh, yeah. But I was, you know, totally disassociated and didn't feel anything. And it was, it's kind of a mental thing, right? Because I never look when I'm getting an injection like that, but... I did spot the size of the needle. It has to be kind of long to get through all the tissue, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I was like, oh, don't look at that. Um, and then the second time we did it, the most recent, I just did, I don't know, maybe 100 milligrams of ketamine in a, in a, a lozenge, you know? Yeah. And then... Um, well, and ketamine makes a really nice... I felt um, super relaxed. The thing mm -hmm. is, when, it, when we were done, because it's a really quick procedure, surprisingly quick... Then I, I put on a playlist and I mask and just had uh, a little journey. Just have a journey. Yeah. yeah, and I was with with the scepter in, you know. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I, I kept oh, yeah. checking. I was like, did that fall out? Because you can't really feel anything when you're yeah. a ketamine, you know. And I, I would check, and I'm like, no, it's still in there. And I didn't want, actually, didn't want to get up. I just felt like I was like super relaxed, and I was just doing some healing, kind of quantum healing on myself, and sending love and energy to that part of my body to support it. But it. I would say it was like actually quite a positive experience. We with we, my, we have you people, know, yeah, we have people sedation. report that, and we have the in harmony cushion, and we we play like music and use fibroacoustic therapy and try to make it a, um, a a positive experience. Yeah, well, I think that's another unique thing about your clinic is like I don't know, it's like you're a healer, dude. You're not a doctor. I mean, you're really like a definition of what a doctor should be—a healer. And yeah, the sound, the sound beds and. Ah, just that there's cool like shamanic music playing in the you know in the procedure room and everyone in your all your staff is like very tapped into that mindset they're meditators and like conscious awake people mm -hmm. so there's a much different kind of clinical experience when you have that level of consciousness and you know just the intentionality behind it is mm -hmm. not just what you would find in a normal medical clinic by any stretch it's super mm -hmm. cool yeah so yeah. I, I love well, going down you. there. I, I can't wait that. to, yeah, I can't yeah. wait to come back down there. And across the street, I don't know if you've ever walked in those antique shops across the street from your mm -hmm. clinic. Mm -hmm. Dude, there, there's like three or four in, in one building that are kind of separate businesses and they have all this uh, mid-century modern furniture and art. It's like so insane. Uh -huh. yeah. Last time Alice and I were there, I was just like, oh my, get me out of here. Like I have a credit card in my pocket. This is dangerous. And I, I don't think we bought anything maybe a couple of trinkets yeah but yeah i was like i want to come back down and like actually right. buy some amazing antiques from that place i've and never you guys, seen you that guys kind stayed of right at the clinic too so anybody listening to this just keep in mind you know ask if if it's available because it's a really sweet you know a couple of really sweet apartments right there and the, the, the clinic yeah and you got the red light panels in the apartments uh -huh. everything's dialed in i didn't have to change all the light bulbs they were already red <laughs> yeah know? it's it like yeah it's really nice those two apartments are super cool one Definitely thing i would like to easier. just kind of um uh, speak to is if anybody is uh, either looking to become a patient um and wanted to explore more information about excels or 
if you're a practitioner, if you're a clinician, if you have a clinic and you're interested in, in we, th- we there, this doesn't have a, a huge scale, right? But um, we are open to taking some applications and um, possibly talking to some people about utilizing some of these in their own practice. So um, we'll do a, a link. Yeah, we'll put it at lukestory.com slash excels. And whatever link you give us, we'll just hyperlink to that so that per- people perfect. Can find and we'll it, yeah. we'll pack that um, that link that page full of a bunch of information and references. And okay, cool. I think Ben Greenfield. Um, it, it, I'm going to write a pretty good article on this that he's going to publish on his website. Epic. So I hope someone in Austin who owns a clinic hears this and gets the stem cell IVs because it's freaking amazing. I would want to do it often. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, All right, sure. dude. Well, we got to get you to the airport. Thank you so awesome. much for, for stopping by on your way to Hawaii. I yeah. know Austin is no Maui, but I uh, appreciate you coming through. And it was, fun to, have, pleasure, it was fun to have you stay over last night yeah. as it worked out. We had a spare room for you, so that was fun. Having, we don't have house guests hardly ever, so it was kind of fun waking up and see you making your smoothie and just chilling. It was super fun. Yeah, so blessed, Luke. You're such a dear friend. I'm so blessed Likewise. to have you in my life. And this has been a really fun short but just full of you know we've packed a lot into the last what 12 hours or <laughs> for real for real like always man all right yeah. thank you until we meet again 